You're listening to the Epically Geeky Show, a place for all things geeky. Welcome to the Epically Geeky Show, episode number 50. I'm your host for the evening, Eugene Stevens. Tonight's opening question is, when, uh, if, if, if given the option at a fast food joint, would you choose fries, tots, or onion rings? Cyrus Martin. Oh, wow. That is a complicated yeah. question. I, it is, because, and I know what you're going to say. It depends on the restaurant. But no, just, it doesn't. It did, well, it depends on the restaurant, but it also depends on like what else you're getting. Are we okay. Getting, or we could just be like, uh, fries, tots, onion rings. Which one survives? The other two go in the fire. I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to get to that level, but go on. Tots, tots go in the fire. If I had to pick one as a yes. consistently good choice... Correct. Then it's going to be uh, French fries. Okay. But French fries are never the best of anything. The, the French fries are a safe okay. They're That's safe, not true. They're a safe okay. Like if, Five if guys? It, well, okay. But what I'm saying is if there's a place that offers fries and also tater tots, there's a good chance the tater tots are going to be way better. But they might not be. And if they have onion rings, I love onion rings. A lot of people don't like onion rings, but I love onion rings. And there's a good chance they'll be better, but they might not. So onion that's why that's why fries are the safe good. You're going with fries. I have to. I'm sorry. No, it's, it's your choice. It's all good, dude. Laney, you've already kind of spoken up a little bit. Obviously not tater tots. So uh, of the last... I don't time. dislike tater tots. I just, like, I've never gotten tater tots and been like, yes, tater tots. <laughs> Fuck yeah. There's, there's another t-shirt. Yes, tater tots. <laughs> yeah, like every time I've ever gotten tater tots, I'm like, mm, I should have gotten onion rings. This was a bad decision. <laughs> 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 Like even if I go to like Sonic and get like the tater like the the like loaded tot, so they've got like chili and cheese on them and shit. I'm like, oh, I should have just gotten fucking French fries. Like this was fucking dumb. You ever go to Sonic and get chili cheese tater tots with onions? Hell yeah! Hell oh. yeah! Oh, that's good. The onions, man, they take it to a new level. Mm. Hell yeah! But I I am a fry girl through and through. That French fries are like in my top five of things that I love about being alive. So. Did I ever tell? Damn. Did I ever tell my, when I first worked? My first job I ever had was at McDonald's, and there's this one time this dude came in and said, "I would like some freeze," and I was like, "Yeah, you want what? freeze?" And I was like, "You want a freeze? Go outside." And he was like, "I would like some freeze," and I was like, "I don't know what he wanted." I just stared at him. He was fresh. He pointed down at the fries, and I was like, "Oh, you want fries?" And he was just like looking at me like. Duh. Yeah, dumbass. That's what I want. Okay, so you're you, you, you're saying he's French. Like, do you hear this a lot up in Canada? Canada. Well, uh, usually, fries is pronounced free or something along those lines. So, yeah. Interesting. So, do they call them French free or just free? They would just be free. Okay. Because, <laughs> I mean, we still call it Texas toast. I was just, I wasn't sure. But Texas toast is a totally different thing than regular toast. True. I just didn't know. Anyway, uh, <laughs> speaking of Canada, uh, Ray, where do you come down on this? Uh, it's tough. It really is tough because it depends on I your I bet mood. there's like a fourth secret option in Canada that we don't know about. Th there is a fourth option. And it's, called, it's called Frings. What? 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 Frings. So in, in – uh, we have a – Fast food restaurant. I think you guys have it. Harvey's. Yes, there are mm -hmm. some parties. Yeah. So at Harvey's, uh, they offer frings, which is half fries and half mm -hmm. onion rings. So you Fuck get Fuck you. Are you kidding? <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> so yeah, I don't have to decide. <laughs> well, that's oh bullshit. God. So is it literally Canada a bag is with French fries and milk and honey and frings? And I'm going. Did you say Harvey's or Hardee's? Harvey's. Har Oh, no. We don't, uh, have, no we don't have Harvey. So is it just like French fries and onion rings in the same bag, or is it some kind of a hybrid creature? So, so it's it's a – we have a cardboard box that we get, and instead of one cardboard box, you get kind of a half of one each. So it's like two little ones side by side. And they oh, put my God. Onion rings in one and fries in the other. 
Oh my god, it's like when you get regular and curly fries at Jack in the Box. Oh my yeah. god. Oh my oh, god. Okay, so this isn't the com- they're not combined into one superfood. It's just <laughs> you know. no, because that would be in- that's some kind of bullshit that we would do here in America because we're assholes. <laughs> in Canada, weird. they know how to keep things pure. They're like, I'm gonna give you both of these things because I'm nice, friend, but I'm not gonna like make them into something weird and alien. I'm just gonna make yeah. them good. We don't Here. know when we don't know when to quit. We ruin everything. We don't know when to quit. <laughs> so yes, yeah, nachos yeah, inside of our pizza crust and shit. Sorry, yeah, I get yeah. very upset about yeah, this. No, you're right. We we <laughs> stuff entire pizza crust now with cheese. They had the uh, I don't know. If, I remember. I don't know if it was Pizza Hut or, or whatever, but they had they sell a grilled cheese pizza, which is which is the whole pizza is stuffed with cheese. We do patine pizza, so <laughs> so th- th- they're 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 not quite on that level, but they've definitely fallen in, in line. They're like that kind of sounds like a good idea. What can we what can we stuff in our pizza that's not stupid? That's right. So <laughs> y'all, need um, be, y'all need to be careful with us, Canada. I'm just saying we're we're a bad influence. We're a bad. Oh, yeah. We are a bad influence. <laughs> you might be a bad influence, but we learn from your mistakes. But there, there you go. That's yeah. that. There you go. Um, to You're me, like this is sibling. this is a no brainer. I love onion rings. I understand. It also depends on where I'm going because there are cases where the fries are better than onion rings, and then of course onion rings aren't offered everywhere. But if the option is there for onion rings, I almost always opt for onion rings. Um, they're just awesome. I love onion rings. I always have. Always will. Where where's your favorite onion rings? Oh geez, man, this is like a two hour conversation. <laughs> Secretly, there's, this there's is the, this the one is, that's, there's the there's the like it's got the really good because it really comes down to the breading. Sometimes you like kind of the flaky breading. Sometimes you like I be good want and that crispy, crumbly breading with like the it's all crunchy and blah, 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 blah. and I love so the good. Bread, um, um, breading on a lot of the stuff. So. Mm-hmm. Mm, I don't. I don't. No, I can't go into this. Uh, that, like I said, that's well, that's that's a whole thing. Let's just compare two then. We'll just say Whataburger versus Sonic. That's actually a very good comparison because between the two, no, they are very same. I thought you were. I thought you said uh, no. Whataburger and Sonic is very different. Yeah. Yeah. Was, um, I would have to go with Whataburger on that one. Yeah, Whataburgers has like the uh, almost uh, like. Um, batter like you would get a uh, fish or something battered in you know uh you know what i mean like long yeah. john silver's kind of fish batter and sonic's like something else it's like uh bread <laughs> almost like bread like uh breadcrumbs or something it's like a cornmeal type yeah, of yeah yeah, I was thinking, yeah cornmeal yeah yeah that's more it's yeah. like if you took funnel cake batter and a cornmeal batter and like mixed them together yeah. So, which one did you say Sorry. you preferred? I said the Whataburger. What about you, Lanny? What do you think? Me? Uh, I like the Sonic onion rings. I like. But I don't. Onions. I feel like you. I don't order like onion rings are not my go-to unless I'm at a place that I know has shitty fries. <laughs> you know, I like to go to a restaurant and get onion rings. You know, like a sit-down. A uh, restaurant where you get like a really nice burger and cheddars. You know. I love cheddars because they've got a a really good uh, bacon cheeseburger and like the they give you this tower of freaking onion rings and they are awesome. So, mm. yes. all right. Now that we've talked for food about half an hour, um, <clears throat> I'm guessing the reason why that is is because uh, some of the members on this show are. Uh, not looking forward to tonight's subject. Yeah, um, Ray. Uh, Ray, what kind of onion rings? Shut up. No, listen. So, um, <laughs> so our good friend Jay uh, proposed this idea. He came up with this idea for a topic, and I was like, oh, this that's a really good idea. So I thought, let's go ahead and, and schedule it. Uh, even though he's not able to make it on tonight's episode, he did send me his list, so I'll be reading off his list as well. And um, last week we did uh, some of the best stuff from 2017. But are from 2016. But a lot of people really look back at 2016 as to all of the deaths, which is kind of what we're going to be looking at tonight. We're going to be remembering some of the most heart wrenching, just gut punch character deaths. 
from make Lainey cry. Yeah, from movies. Seriously, get ready. TV shows, video games, books, whatever. If if you read it, if you experienced it, it counts. And then uh, we're gonna wrap up with at least one of the uh, actual actors that we've lost at some point. Didn't have to be from last year. Uh, which actor, actress, or uh, musician, whoever it is that's on your list, that their death just really hits you hard. So, that being said, would anyone like to volunteer to go first? I'll rip off the band aid. All right, Lainey. Who is the first? What is the first character death that just like was a gut punch? By the way, I knew I was a sensitive person until, and like I was very aware of that. I think I forgot how sensitive until I started making this list <laughs> and came up with like, no joke, like, 20 plus wow yeah. yeah it's a lot i just get very emotional about stuff um but i think the death I, at least the one that i can remember hitting me the hardest was and this should come as no surprise to anybody was mufasa dying in the lion king he was on my list oh yeah. my goodness i oh god like i still can't think about it too hard because it makes me very upset but like the whole thing with Scar, and then he falls into the wildebeest stampede, and then Simba's trying to get him up. Oh, oh God. Like, it's just too much. I can't. Yeah. It's... Plus, like, I just find James Earl Jones' voice, like, so satisfying and, like, comforting. Yep. <laughs> like, my friend Molly and I always talk about that, like, with this movie. It's something like Mufasa's, like, one of, like, our dream dads. You know, he's just... Uh, a plus plus kind of a person and it just makes you so sad it was just awful but i do i remember seeing that in the theater and like that being the first time a movie had really really upset me like made me beside myself crying mm. so yeah fun topic thanks guys Yay. awesome we <laughs> yeah. can thank you for that one yeah, yeah that, that really sucks you ding <laughs> <laughs> hey, like I said, you can thank Jay for this one. Um, I'm going to go next. Um, I guess there technically should have been another one on my list that would be the first death, character death that really hit me, uh, but I'll add it here later. Uh, but mine is, I've talked about this multiple times. Uh, it changed my life, had a great impact on the person that I am. Uh, and that's Optimus Prime. Like, to sit in a theater in 86 as a young boy and watch mm. multiple characters that, you know, you, you loved, you know, watching every Saturday morning, like not just get shot, but like die in front of you. And then to see your hero on his deathbed and this, this whole played out, you know, thing, it wasn't just Optimus prime got shot and died. It was literally, he was on his deathbed and he gives the speech and then, you know, he slow, his eyes just slowly start to go out and then he turns gray and it was just, and then of course, uh, 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 the boys there are crying and it's just like, what the fuck? What were you doing? Why did you do this? Um, but yeah, that hit and that hit hard and that has always hit me hard. Um, yeah. So Optimus Prime is, is without question, without doubt, absolutely number one on my list. So, uh, Cyrus, what's, uh. What's a character death that hit you? Okay, so I don't think anything other than Optimus Prime really comes close to this for me. Uh, it's going to be Old Yeller. Oh, uh, man. Because when we are kids, we are growing up, it's the 80s. Uh, Old Yeller, Texas author, you know, Big deal. It's a big deal in Texas, okay? Maybe not nowadays. I don't know what the fuck kids do nowadays. But, like, when we were kids in the 80s, everybody read Old Yeller. It was, it was read here, too. Okay. It was a big deal, okay? And it was a movie that was made a long you know, time ago, I think in the 60s. Yeah, 60s. Yeah. So, uh, we all read the book, and we watched the movie in school. Yep. And... Did you seriously watch that movie in school? Yes, we did. Oh, oh yeah. my God. More, uh, than, more than once. More than once. Yeah. I think it was in grade two when I watched it. Yeah. And uh, Old Yeller is one of those stories that, uh, you know, it's like you're a boy and, you, you know, a boy and his dog and 
Yep. Uh, you want to protect your family and you want to, you know, the boys entrusted to take care of things while his dad's away. And there's so many elements of manhood tied up in this story. Okay. Now I understand it's going to be impactful for girls and everything. Also, I'm not, you know, whatever, but I'm just saying from a male perspective, uh, old well, Yeller, it's written from a male perspective. So it's right. a little easier for y'all to identify with for sure. Yeah. For better or worse, easier to identify with. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so Old Yeller is famously one of those stories where dudes cry. It doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter, whatever. Unless you're just a sorry son of a bitch. You usually cried at some point, uh, either reading or watching Old Yeller. Thinking about it, I fucking cried. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did. I know, I did. Because it's not just as simple as, oh, the dog died. You know, it's not that. It's, no, no. Travis had to kill him, and it was awful. It, it's it's the dog. Spoiler alert. Yes. God. Oh, what the? Uh, no. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> but, Christ. Like, like I said, there's so much that leads up to that, and so much that you invest yourself in in the character, and what it means to 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 have that responsibility put on you, and then the dogs. You know, the dog is a uh, is helping. It's not just a pet. The dog is partner exactly know? yep and your partner fucking saves your life saves the family and his reward for that is to be put down. infected and, and and then you have to put him down you are what causes cool. him to I'm die gonna go hug molly for an hour bye guys <laughs> the, the emotional, yet, the emotional, oh uh, you know, the the emotional catastrophe that this story has caused generations of people. Uh, I don't know of anything else that really matches that. And Louis Lemoore is Louis Lemoore wrote this, or I have to look it up. I don't know. I think I'm wrong. I, don't know. I, think, I think it's somebody else. I'm wrong. It's probably. But the guy who wrote this, what an asshole. I'm sorry. <laughs> what a I fucking mean, dick. <laughs> uh, he did this to all of us. But you know what? It's a lesson that... Fred Gibson. Fred Gibson. Thank you. That fucking dick. It's a cinnamon for uh, George R. R. Martin. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, there's a difference between sadomasochism and... <laughs> <laughs> And trying to, you know, impact a difficult lesson into youth. You know, there's yeah. a big difference. <laughs> but anyway, that's why I picked Old Yeller, and that's why it's my number one. That's a good pick. Ray, what's one on your list, man? All right. I'm going to my childhood as well. <sighs> Never-ending story. Oh! oh no, Martins. I'm done. I'm out. Bye. <laughs> Y'all are seriously killing me. I Where's can't do it. I can't do it. I know I Trey, you was trying to pull art. Oh, God. I gotta get I can't. I can't do this. I gotta get I my alcohol. Hang on, Let's, one for me, one it. for my. Nobody, nobody, nobody told me. By the way, when I first watched that movie, that that happened. Oh, what a devastating! How story. could they not tell you? Like exactly, and like person. as a horsey girl, and that horse looks like mine, and I just couldn't. I like, I remember like running out of the room and like locking myself in the bathroom, crying. It was just too much. <laughs> So Chris and I were driving home and we were talking about this scene and, and she said the most devastating part is the way that they edited it. You know, he's pleading and he's just begging and then it just goes silent and you just see him sitting in front of an empty swamp and you know what's happened. Yeah. And it's it's just like your heart and your stomach, you're just down in the pit of your being. And I, re I, re I remember not being able to process that when I was yeah. a kid. I remember yeah. just not being able to deal with it. And it's a kid's movie. I, That's I, the blacked, thing, I blacked that out of my, my my thoughts for years. I didn't even remember that happened. Until I didn't I remember it. it until I saw it on a list when I was doing research. And I was like, no, I'm not going to put that on there because I can't think about it too hard. You, because you it will know, literally. You, yeah, you want to hear something me. shitty? I, no. I, I had my daughter watch that movie. Uh, Why? I didn't remember Why that did shit was in my oh, No. Yeah. And then it got to that scene, and it was too late. I was like, "Oh, 
Fuck. How old was she? Uh, maybe 10. Oh, no. Have y'all ever seen that video of the little girl watching Lion King, by the way, during no. the scene of Mufasa dying, and you hear the music, and you see her little baby face? Oh my God! I ju- I can't see. I no, can't I haven't that. seen that. That sounds I horrible. Can't, I can't even watch a video of there's, a child watching it. Like it, there's a whole no. thing on YouTube of nothing but that crap where people film their kids watching horrible shit. Horrible stuff. People are. They're horrible, a little horrible. emotional journey. Oh, there's God. one that's way worse than that, and I don't know if it's on y'all's list. Oh, this one was okay because like you can hear her dad in the background like comforting her and like oh having. Well, that's a good one sit. then. Because like she wanted to watch it, and so it's it's sweet because he's like, "Baby, come sit with daddy. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay." You know, he's trying to like make her feel better. Like that was okay, but I'm just like, <laughs> oh god, <laughs> like I feel your pain. I was I was trying to say though, there's a movie worse than The Lion King that they do this to kids on. And I, I don't know if y'all will pick it or not, but if not, I'll get, I'll mention it with my next one when I come. Back. All right, uh, Lainey, what's uh, what's your next one? Uh, um, okay, let's see. There's there's a lot on here, and I had them in a pretty good order, but I'm what wondering was, what now. Was, what, was, what was raised? I missed. I... Our tax. That was, that was the one we just talked about. <laughs> see, I don't. I blank it out of my thoughts. I don't want to <laughs> deal with it. <laughs> okay, my uh, my second one, um, I remember reading this and, like, losing my shit over it. Um, but when Sirius Black dies hmm. yeah. in, in the Harry Potter books, I, I don't know why that death in – yes, I do. I know exactly why that death in particular. But, like, for some reason, Sirius's death hit me harder than any of the other ones that followed it like that one was it will always be the one that was just like a punch in the gut and I think it's because like you just you root for Harry for so long and he has no family and you just feel horrible for him because of that and then he finally gets this like glimpse of his parents in his godfather Sirius and then that's taken away from him. And, oh, God, it was just awful. Did, did you hear there's a, a fan theory about this one? No. It's it's actually pretty dark. Um, but it was that Dumbledore knew or sent Sirius there and knowing that he was going to go to his death so that he Harry wouldn't move in with him because then the spell would be broken. <gasps> no. Yeah, that's pretty screwed up. Well, I mean, if that's true, then Dumbledore got his anyway, so. <laughs> wow, she turned. <laughs> yeah, fuck Dumbledore. No, oh, I love Albus Dumbledore. The whole protection Dumbledore. spell, right? The whole protection spell. From, yeah. yeah. Anyway, I thought that was kind of cool. That's true. Oh, I don't like this. Did y'all see that uh, comparison on Facebook where it was comparing evil lords? And it was like Lord Vader, you know. Uh, conquered all this stuff and everything, and then there was a, a Lord. So I can't. Oh, Lord Sauron conquered Middle Earth and all this kind of stuff. And then it was like, um, what was it? The dude on Lord Harry Voldemort. Potter, Lord Voldemort, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, had uh, great difficulty trying to take over a school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When you put it in that comparison, it's uh. <laughs> Oh That's pretty good. I just realized that we we skipped Jay's. Um, oh, one, yeah, of yeah. Ones, one of the ones that Jay had on his list was um, <clears throat> Arnold and Terminator Two. Oh yeah, no, that's a that's a good that's one. A, that, that was tough. Literally, did not know that that happened. Yep. Uh, oh, so spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At the end of uh, Terminator Two, like that was because you know scene. Yeah. You, Cause you spend the whole movie. I mean, you know, the first one you see the first one, he's he's the bad guy, and the second one he's he's the good guy, and you spend the entire movie like trying to, you know, uh, he's given humanity. You know, you're you're falling in love with him. He does absolutely everything in his power to, you know, try to save Sarah Connor and and her boy, and then is like, you know, I have to do what I have to do, and it's just like, no, you don't have to do this. There's other ways around it. Yeah, that yeah. was that was kind of tough. And once again, he cannot self-terminate. So the kid, they got to lower him in the damn thing themselves. Yep. Ugh. I've never seen that movie. 
Oh, it's such a good movie. You gotta watch it. The very last. I'm not thing a Terminator is- person. I've seen like two of them. No, you know what? The second one's the one. If you're gonna watch any Terminator movie, the second one's. The oh, one you would. Watch. You know what? Yep. You would really like Second Terminator it's because good. Lin- Linda Hamilton is a badass. Yeah, oh my god! Power. Yeah. Okay. Maybe oh, and, and to add to the movie, it'll probably help you enjoy it a little more. Uh, mm-hmm. She has these scenes in the movie where. Uh, I won't spoil anything really for you saying this, but she's... Oh, like, I don't really care about spoilers. You're good. Okay, so she's like locked up in the movie, and mm-hmm. there's some scenes where the guy that's watching her in the cell and everything and her get into like a, a fight, like an altercation. And during the scenes, Lyndall Hamilton kept trying to tell him to actually hit her because she wanted... Really? To, yes. yes. And he wouldn't do it. What a fucking beast. He wouldn't do it because he didn't want to hit her. And then so she got so mad about it that there's a scene in the movie where she busts him in the mouth and it's real. <gasps> <laughs> it's, I it's love not, her. She's it's my not hero. Her. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, she was a badass in that movie. That's baller. Hell yeah. Um, I, Well, I, so talking about childhood uh, traumas. Uh, I guess I have to put my first one that I didn't originally have on my list, but remembered and I I have to put on there. Um, Even though it it kind of, well, well, it is what it is. Um, E.T. When I watched this movie, I was a little boy, and it was probably one of the first movies that my my parents took me to see. And my mom will never forget, I'm sitting there watching E.T., and it's the death scene. Now, granted, he comes back, but still. There's a point in the movie where you're sure he's dead. I mean, he's dead for the most part. And at that point, as a young boy, I was so inconsolable, I literally jumped up and started walking out of the theater (laughs) (laughs) because I could not take it that E.T. had died. I was just, nope, not having it, so I'm out of here. Um yeah, you know, as an adult, doesn't really hit me that hard or whatever. But yeah, thinking back to it, I'm obviously it hit hard when I was a kid. So I have to add that one to my list. So, uh, Cyrus, what's your next one? Well, let's leave childhood behind for a minute. Um, right. There's a there's a death scene that happened that uh, I think it uh, is probably responsible for a lot of the revolution that happened in television. In recent times. Um, and that's uh, Game of Thrones episode, uh, the last, uh, I think it was the eighth episode of the first season or ninth episode of the first season. Stop it. Have you not Ed. seen Game of Thrones? No, I have, and I know what you're going to say. Okay, well. Mm. Go ahead. When, they, when they killed Ned Stark. Yep. God. I was shocked. Yes. That's on my list. I could not believe it happened. I, I couldn't process because it's like all of a sudden it's just like <laughs> that moment comes and you're like oh god oh god oh no 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 like you just like you want to like jump through the TV because you're you like don't surely this isn't happening happen. it's like okay someone's going to shoot an arrow someone's no. going to shoot an arrow that's someone's when fucking I shoot an arrow that's yeah. when I knew I couldn't trust George R R Martin for shit well you I know what knew it, it the next episode they needed to have and I'm glad they didn't do it on the last episode of the season because they needed another episode to make sure you believed it because yeah. i yeah. didn't believe it i thought surely i didn't see that correctly or something's you know n- like because that doesn't happen at least it didn't used to happen and yep. the next episode they paint it for you in in perfectly clear detail that the, this is the world that exists yeah. and and uh from that moment that was the greatest show on tv from, and and that, and yeah, it was horrifying. But it told you no one is safe. And yeah, because he was pretty much on all the posters. He was like, yep, he was the main character as far as anyone was concerned. It was like, yeah. oh, fuck, he's dead. What the hell? That yeah. like killing Rick Grimes in the first season. Exactly. It was the main character of the show. He was. It was a. This show seemed to be about him, mm-hmm. but it wasn't. No, it wasn't. <laughs> we didn't know that until that moment. We thought it was about him. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, very shocking. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. All right, Too Ray. Much. What's your next one? Uh, all right. So I'm going to go with this uh, more, a little more recently. Um, 
and this one hit a little bit more seriously than other ones just because it was like the fans of the show brought it back to be a movie and i'm talking about serenity oh so you got firefly and the fans begged and begged and begged for a movie and we finally got one and it's serenity and when al uh al tudux uh character uh hoban when he dies from like just crashing and he saves everybody's life but he takes his own in, in that moment and it's like oh shit nobody's gonna survive this movie they're gonna yep. kill everybody that's that's exactly what i thought too i thought well fuck <laughs> yeah so that was yeah that was a, a oh shit moment yes it was man that was harsh yeah because when he died like when some of the other ones died you know, it was it was hard watching, but he was the one that I was just like, no. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, everybody really was rooting for all those characters to come back to, to whatever they could, and when you finally get it, and now you're watching them die on the screen. It's yeah, like, it's like losing the show all over again. Exactly. It's yeah, because I mean, I'm sure there was a lot of people that were like, hey, we're getting a movie. If this does really well, maybe they'll bring back the TV show. Nope. Yep. Don't want that to happen. Nope. Because <laughs> I don't want to live in a world where they're dead. Exactly. So, yeah, that was rough. Um, the next one that Jay had on his list, uh, he actually had his broken into movies, TV shows, and video games. Um, the next one he had on his list for movies was uh, Tom Hanks' character in Philadelphia. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. I've never seen that. Good movie. Really? Yeah, it is a good movie. It's a really good movie. Oh, well done. Hmm. I think it's everybody the- needs to watch that movie once. It's depressing. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, but the the character building in that, like, if if you are into screenplays and you want to watch somebody uh, create character, that is a movie to watch. You know, it's a different era because Tom Hanks' character is gay in the movie. Yeah, and mm-hmm. there's so much in the movie that you know comes from. You know, like Denzel Washington's character has to constantly deal with this whole, uh, you know, dynamic of uh, homophobia and, you know, how it's related to AIDS and everything. Right. And uh, it's a very important movie to watch, you know. It really is. Interesting. It, That's on my list then, because that actually sounds like something I would enjoy watching. The opera scene for me is what, like, really built those two characters and brought them together. I don't know if you remember that part, but anyway. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So, all right, uh, Lainey, what's your next one? So my next one, actually, I do have a question, actually, before I get too far on my list. Am I, I know Eugene is very behind in Game of Thrones, and I think oh, one of yeah. my deaths on here might spoil it. Go ahead. No, no, no. I'm, I am going to save it, but I think Ray knows which one I'm talking I about. I know exactly which one you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, so I'm going to skip that one. But um, but my next one actually takes place in one of my favorite, favorite, favorite movies because it is a play on one of my other favorite movies, and that is Hook, which oh. just Hook in, Hook in general just makes me cry. I don't know what my problem is, but every time I watch that movie and he walks into the house and he says, hello, Wendy lady, I burst into tears. I just can't deal with it. Yeah. Oh God, I just love it so much. But when when Rufio dies in that movie and he looks up at Robin Williams, oh my God! Yeah. I, just, I wish I had a dad like. You. Oh God, it's just it's so. I don't know why they do this to us in these kids' movies, but it's just like Rufio's character has finally come around, and you're so excited about it, and they're all fighting together, and it's just this big, huge like thing and it's uh it's heartbreaking that's a, that's a good movie that's a really right. good movie. Yeah. that is a wonderful too. movie i love that movie the cinematography in that movie is beautiful mm, it is. it's it just is. so well shot and i love like the way that they they play those characters so because i usually have a really hard time when like non-disney people do a play on a disney movie that i really love but i love that movie because it just feels so authentic and so real so but yeah, I ugh, Rufio's death always really hit me really really hard. It made, always makes me very sad. 
So, but mm. like I said, that movie in general just has, gives me all the feels. So, <laughs> yeah. My next movie is um, um, okay. So you know, I'm not a, I'm a fan of okay. Well, okay. How do I start this? Um, I, I've told everyone they need to be watching movies with Mikey. And uh, last night I, or maybe it was the night before I was plowing through some of the other episodes and I got to the one where he's talking about Pearl Harbor, a movie I didn't care for. I haven't seen that movie in a really long time. I've never seen that movie. Um, I don't know if I've seen it all the way through. He talks about it in that he thinks that's the turning point for Michael Bay. And I have to say, I kind of would agree where uh, Michael Bay was trying to do something more than, uh, uh, you know what? You know, uh, try to do something that had a little more story to it, and you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, was wasn't just you know just constantly you know uh, explosions, this, that, and the other, and it wasn't received well. And he's like, I wonder if this is what turned Michael Bay to going, well, fuck it. If people aren't going to care about all this extra stuff, I'm just going to do bombs blowing up and stuff like that. And you could, you could look at his his filmography before and after that movie and say, yeah, I kind of see that because one of his earlier movies that I greatly enjoyed is Armageddon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, of never course, seen it. before you being ne- a father, well, you it never saw Armageddon. Armageddon. You haven't seen it. Nope. Oh my God. How have you not seen that movie? Cause I thought <sighs> it was super sad and I didn't need to watch another. <laughs> okay. Well, do you mind if I tell you what happens? Oh no, you can spoil it. You're That's sure. Fine. Okay. Spoilers genuinely do not bother me. Go okay. Ahead. Okay. Um, when um, uh, fact, Bruce Willis's character, what happens. Yeah. Harry, is doing that whole speech saying, "Take care of my daughter," and yep. is having that whole moment where he's on the screen with her. That oh, yeah, like, I've seen that scene. Yeah, I that hurts. That. I didn't break. I, I honestly teared up in the theater, but it wasn't until the point where they are landing and uh, what's his face looks at the the. The window and goes no Harry you the man I just I started crying I couldn't help it uh, just as a man it was hard to watch being a father now I don't know if I could handle it because I'd be like yep absolutely gonna go fucking die so I can save my daughter and everyone else yep. so yep not even not even a, not even a second yeah. thought that's that's not even a choice so uh, yeah you know Michael Bay gets a lot of shit for especially his newer stuff. I'm one of the ones who gives him shit for his newer stuff, but his older stuff, I a lot of it I generally enjoy. So, and that's definitely one of them. Sorry again. All right, Cyrus, what's your next one? Okay. <clears throat> so, I didn't I was a fan of this show when it was when it was out, but I kind of tailed off watching it. I didn't I didn't commit to it uh, as the seasons continued on. I didn't actually see this at the time. I saw this later. And I was reminded of it earlier today when doing research for this wonderful project that you've given us. What's again? Fabulous day. homework. And uh, I believe that Lainey will be most uh, affected by this particular uh, death. Oh, God. Because I know Lainey liked this show, too. Oh, no. And all I have to do is tell you the name of the show, and you're going to know what I'm going to be referring to. Don't overestimate me. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever watch Buffy the Vampire Slayer? I did, and I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Chris brought that one up. <laughs> okay. There's an episode where her mom dies, and uh, I was very shocked the way that it was done in the show, and it was super realistic and not anything like Buffy usually is uh, very, was it a very special episode. It was a very special Tonight, on a very special episode of Buffy the vampire slayer. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Yeah. It was like uh, this feeling of helplessness, this, you know, this, uh, there's this horrible thing that's happened. You can't do anything about, and you're, you can't escape from. And yeah, very, uh, you know, um, I, I'm not going to say it was necessarily like emotional, like to the point where I, you know, felt like I was going to cry or anything. But it was more like emotional in the sense of like, you feel that in your chest, you feel that weight of anxiety for the situation. 
I just think that that's a really great, that's a good sign of a show is when they can make you feel that same feeling. I love that. Yeah, it was, it was great. And I have to say, uh, best acting that she's ever done. Uh, Sarah Michelle Geller. Yeah. Are yeah. you saying that her role in Scooby-Doo was not? <laughs> I just don't. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Man. I didn't to go there. <laughs> Yeah, not so much. But anyway, I thought it was worth, you know, think what you want about the show. A lot of people didn't like it. You know, it was goofy. But uh, that particular uh, thing was uh, on another level for that show. So figured it was worth mentioning. So good. All right, Ray, what's your next one? Oh, Buffy. Sorry. <laughs> so um, this next one, I I love Doctor Who. And Dr. oh, don't uh, you do this? No, 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 no. This one's a slow build because uh. you don't realize you don't realize it at the time when the when the when the character dies. So, um, River Song is introduced to us. Oh, River! And, and she she dies in the very first episode that you meet her. But with time traveling, of course, you you now get to meet her character throughout and fall in love with her. You slowly dawns on you that this character's dead. Like so as you as you watch the whole show, it just makes it that much more devastating. And uh yeah, the it, it the if you ever get a chance to like if you've watched it and, and everything, if you haven't seen it, there's a YouTube video that you get to watch it from her perspective and they actually reverse the timeline so you see her timeline. It's really good. Well, I'll have to check that out. Me too. Oh, River. Love I thought, River when you said Doctor Just Who, I thought you were going with a couple of other ones on there. Yeah, there like let's see so the 16 other ones that it could be. There are yeah, no so joke. many from that one, but that, I picked that one because of how how non, like it's it's insignificant at first. You have to keep reminding yourself though while you're watching it because like you know it's going to come, but you have to like, it, yeah. you're right though, it's that slow build like, oh, yeah. so much. And then you you finally get it when she says, uh, "We've never." When he says, "We've never done that before," and she she's like, "Well, there's a first time for everything," is what he says, and she says, "And there's a last," realizing that that's her last kiss with him. So I thought that was you know. Oh, River. Yeah. Anyway, this is a real upbeat show that we're doing. I'm I'm glad we decided yeah, to do I'm, this. I'm reminded of a uh, a. We're, we're watching Friends over again on Netflix right now. Oh, and I'm, re I'm remembering uh, Phoebe. Uh, her mom didn't let her watch anything bad. <laughs> and so she thought... You know, she old thought Yeller. Old Yeller had babies <laughs> instead of rabies. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, with that gun, Travis. No, the end. <laughs> the end. I love that, love that that's, show. That's a great episode. <laughs> so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, her mom won't let her watch anything bad. Yeah, her mom, oh god, that was so good. And then you find out too that her mom killed herself. Yes. And it's like, <laughs> oh, I love that show. It's so good. All right, sorry. <laughs> uh, the next one that um, uh, Jay had on his list was uh, Henry Blake's character dying on Mash. Oh, oh yeah, that's a good. I one. don't remember that. That was very controversial with the way yeah. that they did that. Uh, that was really shitty, actually. If you think about it, I yeah, because the whole you you went through what the whole episode, and it's about his dishonorable discharge or his honorable discharge, and it's like I'm going home and everything's gonna be great and you know I'm gonna miss everyone and everything else, and then radar comes in and and reads the thing while everyone's in in uh, uh, surgery is like. He was shot down and he's dead. It's just like, what the fuck? Well, That's and I understand that they they really wanted to show that they were in a war, and they they as much as they didn't uh, like they didn't really mix words or anything like that. But that one was like a, a true. No, this is a war show. Yeah. Y'all know the writers didn't tell the actors what was going to happen, right? No, I didn't really? know that. Yeah, they no, they didn't. The, the ending scene there, the only thing that they wrote in the script was Radar comes out and reads a message from him 
and then everyone reacts to it. That's the only thing they wrote. So That's when they shitty and also a great way to get authentic reactions. Oh yeah, yeah. So the reactions you see in that those are real reactions to them being shocked. Wow. That's crazy. My goodness. Can you imagine him having to read that? No. He didn't know. That's awful. Kitty. Yeah. I heard a kitty. Yeah. That makes Mugo. me happier. Mugo. <laughs> All right, Lainey, what's your next one? So my next one is um, this stuff hit me in two different ways because I read it in the book and it made me very, very upset. And then I saw it in the movie and something about the way that they shot it in the movie like really, really got to me. Um, so when I first read The Hunger Games, actually, funnily enough, when I f was first reading The Hunger Games, it was right around the time that my nephews, Eugene's boys, were born. And I remember like being up at their house over spring break to try to like just be an extra set of hands around the house and like reading that late at night, like being up with them and helping them make stuff. And I remember reading this scene like in the guest room or something like that and just like bawling my eyes out. But when Rue dies. Yeah, that was tough. In that oh, book, God. it's awful. And like the way that it describes like Katniss grieving for her and it's horrible because she can't even really grieve properly because she's in the middle of this horrible game. It was just awful. And then when I went and saw it in the theaters, first of all, this is a movie that I'm really glad I saw alone. Because when that death happened, I mean, like, when they shot it in the movie, like, you not only see it happen, but you have, like, the added score behind it. And then it shows, like, it does a flash to her home district and yeah. her parents seeing it. And then the whole district starts to revolt. Like, it, oh, my God. I remember sitting in that theater having to, like, cover my mouth with my hands because I was openly sobbing like oh it's just so horrible like the whole premise of that of that franchise like whatever you want to say about the movies and everything but like the whole premise of that of those books is just awful in itself because it's just a dystopian novel and that's what dystopian novels are but like oh just to like see this perfect sweet little sunflower just be another victim of these games is awful so but i just remember that death in particular and i don't know what it was about her uh, what it was about her character that made me so connected to her but that de like that death got to me really bad after i read it it stuck with me for a few days after i saw it it stuck with me for a few days it was a lot ah <sighs> oh real we barely knew thee um, I'm switch, I'm gonna switch gears here. Um, uh, uh, from uh, movies to uh, actually, I actually don't have one that's a TV show now that I think about it. But um, my next one's actually a video game. <clears throat> uh, I was in where was I? I want to say I, oh yeah, that's right. I I didn't play it when it first came out. I played it whenever I was in college. Uh, shortly afterwards. Well, I was at uh, Stephen F. Austin, and I was playing through Final Fantasy VII. No, oh, I know. I've got no idea what you're talking about. I know where you're going. And the scene where Sipiroth comes down and takes his sword and just runs Aerith through with it, I thought, "Oh fuck!" Like, okay, so we're about to have a battle, and we'll have to revive her. And who else is in my party? And then that's it. And it's like, you know. All right, no wait, what? She's she's gone, she's dead, she's not coming back. Like this is no, this is a video game. I I can revive her. I've people have died in my party. I revived them. This is not happening. And like it hit me. I was that was a hard death for me. Uh because being a video game, especially a role playing game, like uh, you know, there was this whole love triangle thing that they built up in the storyline, and Final Fantasy Seven is still one of the best Final Fantasy games, hands down. Yeah. But um yeah, seeing this character that like I had built up and was like part of my team and everything else, and then just, just is gone was like heartbreaking to me. Like I, yeah, it hit me hard. I know a lot of other people felt the same way. I was actually uh, there was another guy that I worked with that was playing through the game as well, 
and he got to it about the same time. And we like literally walked into work the next day. Just like, I'm like, can you believe that shit? He's like, no, what the fuck? <laughs> like, yeah, that, that was hard. That was a hard death for me. So yeah. Uh, Cyrus, what's your next one? All right. I, by the way, I'm right there with you on that. That shit was horrifying. That was, um, yes. Move. Can I just say, by the way, sometimes I get Final Fantasy and Final Destination mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> They're a little different. A little, a little different. <laughs> Not much. <laughs> okay, this next one can be... I, basically, I'm just going to read to you this monologue. Okay? Okay. And, oh, no. And you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Knowledge is what brings us together. The worst Should thing that... that. Ever, all right, here we go. You ready? Right. <laughs> the worst thing that ever happened to me was on Christmas. Oh, God. It was so horrible. It was Christmas Eve. I was nine years old. Me and Mom were decorating the tree, waiting for Dad to come home from work. A couple of hours went by. Oh, my God. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Dad wasn't home. So Mom called the office. No answer. Christmas Day came and went, and still nothing. So the police began a search. Four or five days went by. Neither one of us could eat or sleep. Everything was falling apart. It was snowing outside. The house was freezing, so I went to try to light, to, to try to light up a fire. And that's when I noticed the smell. The firemen came and broke through the chimney top and me and mom were expecting them to pull out a dead cat or a bird and instead they pulled out my father he was dressed in a santa claus suit he'd been climbing down the chimney on christmas eve his arms loaded with presents he was going to surprise us he slipped and broke his neck he died instantly and that's how i found out there was no santa claus what the hell kind of horrible movie is this? That's in Gremlins. It's Gremlins. It's oh, I've never one. seen Gremlins. A Steven Spielberg movie. Child, children's literally. Movie. <laughs> it's. I mean, technically, it's a horror movie, but it's kind of also more so of just kind of like a sci-fi comedy because there's say, a lot of comedy maybe. aspect aspects to it. But literally, midway through this movie, you know, you've got these little monsters running around and you're like trying to deal with that. And literally, the movie just comes to a screeching halt. Yeah. As she gives this monologue, and you're just like, <laughs> holy fuck. And yeah. then the monsters come back out. And it's just like, what the what? <laughs> you know, it was a brilliant wow. movie because Spielberg did some stuff to really get you invested in what was happening, you know? My cat is really annoying. Sorry about that. False. It good. sounds like Coco. It's making me very happy. No, that's not Coco. He's he's overdoing something else. Yeah, I don't I don't know that anybody would ever try to do something like that again. You know, just like out of nowhere have this horrifying story and present it in this really disturbing way. That yes. like little kids are just like, What? <laughs> Nobody's like can process that that just happened. That yep. You're a kid. That's a double whammy because not only is dad dead, but Finn is also not real. Yeah. Well, the, the thing about the first Gremlins movie is this wasn't a ha 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 comedy. You know, no. the first Gremlins movie was scary. It was, it was supposed to be, uh, yeah, it was silly, but the silliness was not so much like fun as it was, this is nuts. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It, Grim, the first Gremlins is a great movie. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, yep. it is. Second Gremlins, not so much. The second. Uh, yeah, not so much. Uh, <laughs> although Jay might, Jay keeps wanting to bring it up. Um, he just likes Hulk Hogan. That's all. <laughs> that's true. Uh, <laughs> Brian, what's your next one? All right. Um, I'll go back to childhood. Okay. Fucking child. <laughs> this one, uh, Chris, again, and I talked about this one. This one hit us pretty hard. Uh, Land Before Time. Stop. Oh, stop. Stop. Boy. You stop it right now. Oh, boy. Stop it. Oh, God. Little Seeing foot. Seeing little foot trying to wake his mom up. <laughs> oh, that's tough. That was bad, man. 
That was rough. Ugh. Just yeah, that's enough. I don't have to say anything more. There. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> I know. Oh, it's so bad. Oh. Um, the next one uh, Jay had on his list was uh, Doctor Green from ER. Oh yeah, I was never Way a huge too young for that. I was never a huge fan of ER, so I've actually pulled up the Wikipedia and I was reading it. I vaguely remember hearing about it. Basically, he had a brain tumor and like started going through chemo in the show, and then decided he wasn't going to do that. Fuck that. He was gonna just he was gonna live the rest of his life the best that he could. And like, literally, there are several episodes dedicated to him just slowly succumbing to cancer and. Like, wow, fuck. So that show came on after my bedtime, so I wasn't allowed to watch it. We stopped watching before that came on. That particular so, series. Yeah. I remember hearing the theme song though while I was trying to go to sleep. Oh yeah. Er. Mm-hmm. Yep. Er. The Earth theme song. Yeah, I remember thinking, er. I was like, why is this show called Er? Er. I can read. Yeah. This doesn't make any sense. All right, Lainey, what's your what's your next one? Um, so my next one, it's not technically a death, uh-huh. okay. but I of like when I remember watching it, and it kind of felt like one. So um, obviously, most of the majority of the population here are Whovians, and I don't know if anybody can ever forget ten regenerating into eleven. That was rough. It's and watching rules. watching David Tennant, like, because at that point, I just remember thinking, like, I don't know if this is the doctor or if this is the actor. But, like, when he just looks looks out and just says, I'm, I don't want to go. Like, oh, it's just yep. so much. And, like, the whole thing with him and Rose and it, it's so, it's just too much to take. It was, it was awful. It was Gut wrenching, and it was the reason why I didn't watch another Doctor Who episode for six months. Was I was not ready to to meet Eleven yet. I just needed to deal with my feelings about Ten leaving. So it was just awful. I I hated it. I hated it so much. I just wanted him to be the Doctor forever. Yep, I agree. I loved it. <sighs> I, just, I loved Eleven too. Eventually, but yeah, Ten. Was it's awful. a thing. Is like now that I've lived with Eleven for a while, I really do. I love Eleven, but I Ten's always going to have that really special place in my heart because he had that perfect balance of really goofy humor, but very sincere um, motivation. You know, genuinely yeah. like, and he could be very serious. You know, so when that happened, it was just very, you know, well, I don't want you to go either. I want you to stay. And it was awful. So just since we're on the topic anyway, the one that I, I had that one as my list as well. But the, the one that I always for, forget to mention and, and it needs to be brought up is the Ninth Doctor. He was so underrated. I love the Ninth Doctor. The Ninth Doctor is actually a um, friend of the show, Andrew Parker's favorite. He's my favorite doctor. He's a great Eccleston is a great doctor. Yeah. And his last words to Rose, I always really appreciate. Yes. <laughs> anyway. Sorry. All right. We could uh, have a whole show about that. And yeah, no joke. Um, my next one is actually from a comic book. Um, I think I can't remember if I had started. Yeah, I definitely started watching The Walking Dead. I think it was only the first season, the only, you know, the six, the six episode season. I had started watching the season and I had asked for um, uh, several of the compilations of the comic books. Um, I didn't care for Lori's character in the TV show. She was, she was a bitch. I didn't care for her character. Um, Didn't really care that, you know, when she was, you know, Taken out in the show. It's like, all right, good. Finally, Lori's gone. We don't have to deal with her anymore. Phew. Not so much in the comic. Um, in the comic, uh, spoiler alert, if anyone doesn't want to hear this, might want to close your ears for a second. Um, in the comic book, uh, it, the governor is raiding the, uh, the prison, and uh, um, he has a tank, and things are going to shit. There's zombies everywhere or whatever. And they're basically like, all right, things have gone to hell. We've got to get out of here. So everyone starts running and it, you turn the page and it's just both pages, full page. Um, Lori gets shot 
in the back with a shotgun and it blows through her and kills the baby as well. Cool. This is awful. It's graphic. It's horrifying. And I remember as I turned the page and saw it, my jaw just dropped and I was just like, Oh shit. Uh, yeah, that, that was rough. Uh, I've never been hit like that in a comic book before. Uh, that's the, that's the one time that I can honestly say a comic book really got me. Uh, but yeah, like I said, her character in the TV show, not so much her character in the book. I, I, in the comic, I really liked. And yeah, when, when, uh, when she died, that was, that was hard. That was hard to do. So, uh, Cy, what's your next one? Hmm. You know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of done. I don't, I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. This is okay. <laughs> okay that's fine. Cause I only, I've only got one more left on my list too. So, uh, Ray, uh, we haven't even talked about actors yet. No, we haven't. Do you are, have we any saving, more characters? are we saving actors till the end? Yes. Okay. okay. All right. So I won't go there just yet. Um, so other than like Harry Potter, there, there was a bunch of books there or a bunch of characters in Harry Potter when I read the books. Uh, Snape and Fred Weasley. and oh, Those are literally the other two I have on my list. Yeah. So, <laughs> so those are pretty hard. Uh, but what I'm gonna, what I'll pick instead, um, just to change it up, I'm gonna go to a comic book as well. But for me, it was Gwen Stacy. <gasps> oh. Um, oh. You know, Spider Man swoops down, catches her, thinks mm-hmm. he saves her, and you know, that was that was pretty crazy. It's awful. So, and uh, yeah, in the comic books, it's just. Enough said. <laughs> there you go. Uh, let's see here. On Jay's list, uh, he has two different ones for video games. Uh, I'll just gonna read them both. I remember one of these. I don't remember which. I think it was that character. Uh, Alex Mason from Black Ops Two, and Sergeant Roach from Modern Warfare. Modern Warfare Two. Uh, yeah, those some of those deaths were crazy in those games. I I don't remember which one was which. I just remember when it happened. I was like, "What the fuck?" Yeah. So yeah, tough, tough stuff. Uh, especially you know, like I said, video games and books. I mean, movies because they're so visual, uh, definitely you know, kind of get their hooks into you. But playing something like a video game or reading something like a book, you know, you you have generally have more time to get associated with the character. So usually when a death like that happens, it it tends to kind of hit you harder. So yeah. Um. We'll make this the final round, so if you want to throw in two or three or there, you need to go ahead um, before we move on to any actors. So, Lainey, uh, any, any, you know, if you need to Honorable throw in one mentions. or two. Or, yeah. Um, so, another one of these isn't a death, but in Homeward Bound, you straight up think Shadow is dead for, like, what feels yeah. like an eternity. Yeah, that, that was That wrecked me as a child. I cannot, this is, I do not watch dog movies. Animal I deaths is, is tough, yeah. I don't watch any movie that has an animal, like, if I feel like that animal's gonna die, I'm not gonna watch it. I won't go see that new movie, The Dog's Purpose. I can't do it. Oh, I yeah, just know agreed. I know it's gonna happen and I'm not gonna be able to handle it because it makes me too upset and I just have to sit with Molly for like three days afterwards and just tell her I love her on a constant loop. So I really about, I can't What about Marley and me? You weren't a fan of Marley and me? Oh <laughs> Marley, don't even get me started. No, okay, what, when Marley and me go? came out, what, I was working <laughs> when I was when Marley and me came out, I was working at a vet clinic. Oh no. Yeah, and we had a dog come in with this the same um stomach issue that the dog in the book. It was awful. It was just horrible. I, I can't I can't do Marley and me. Oof. Same here. So oh god. Just, list for dogs. Nope, I can oh, do it. Oh, it's too much. I can't. So, but yeah, Shadow from Homeward Bound. Like I said, not a real death, but like, like I said, I can't even watch Homeward Bound. Like the idea of those animals getting lost and just like it's too sad. So, um, but um, Shadow from Homeward Bound, and then um, Ellie in Up. Yep. Oh my God, I forgot about that. How did I forget about that? First of all, that movie, the first ten minutes of that movie, there's no words, and it's still a better love story than Twilight. But it's still a better love story than ninety percent of other ever, anything. Yeah. But when Ellie passes, and just oh, it's so. I have a very soft spot in my heart for those like grumpy old grandpas in movies. 
Yeah. I just love them. I just feel like they would like me, and I think we would all get along really well. I just so I love them. We uh, we sat down to watch that movie with the kids. Did you prepare them? We didn't know. So, oh, okay, well, then, anytime it. you watch any Disney movie, Ray, you guys just send me a quick message first. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> we didn't know you then. <laughs> so, uh, oh. yeah, we, we, we sat down, and both Chris and I were looking at each other like, what the hell is this? This is awful. What the hell? Grown yeah. men cry in that movie. Oh, like it's When I thing. watched that movie, it was when Christy and I were still, um, I still going through infertility treatments. So, yeah. It was too much. I like that, that was rough. Oh, because at that time we didn't know if we were going to be get be able to get pregnant or not. Oh, that was That's tough. Awful. Yeah. That's brutal. Oh, that movie. That movie is so good. But like I said, that beginning is just a heartbreak and a half. It's awful. Yep. But yeah, that for sure. And then I also have um. The, I don't know if y'all watch Friday Night Lights. <laughs> No, I've heard nothing but good stuff about it. It's a great show, but there's a death that happens in Friday Night Lights, and it's not one of the characters. It's actually the character's father, but the effect that the death of his father has on him, because it's it's one of the main characters' dads, and his when his dad dies, like it's this whole big thing because he's had such a rocky relationship with his dad. He's like star quarterback of the football team and he's trying to make all of that work. He is taking care of his grandmother who is slowly um, getting for deeper and deeper into, I think, dementia. Like all of this stuff keeps happening to Matt Saracen and you just keep wondering like, when is he finally going to break? And then his dad dies and it's like, it's all truly left up to him and it's awful. Like he makes this, he does this big monologue towards the end of the episode and you just weep openly because you feel horrible for him it's just oh it was it was a lot i remember watching that episode and bawling my eyes out and again having to sit with that for a couple of days because it hit me so hard so awesome oh yeah. such next a good time, show next time we see jay i'm kicking him in the ass all right uh, how dare he <laughs> uh yeah, so uh, I didn't have this one on my list, but I've just got a couple more to throw in there. Uh, yeah, one of the other ones that I thought about that just really hit me was um, uh, talking going back to Doctor Who was uh, – um, oh, my God, I'm blanking on their name. The couple. Pond and Rory. Pond and Rory. Come along, Pond. Oh, Jesus, when they, not, when they took both of them out at the same time, I just mm -hmm. like, no. Yeah, that hit me hard. You couldn't uh, do that. You couldn't do just one of them though. No, no, no. You like, that would have been. I don't know if that would have been more heartbreaking or not. But yeah, that was that, ooh, that was rough. That came on when Eugene and I were in Tyler for Christmas, <laughs> and it was just like happening in the background, and I kept having to like look away because I was like, if I watch this, I will be inconsolable for the rest of the night. Yep. And I don't have time for this. Um. Uh, the last one on my list, uh, and this one didn't hit me as like a. Like made me like sad, I guess to say, or like it didn't like make me cry. It didn't make like cause me to tear up or anything. It just hits me from a uh, an emotional standpoint, um, and that is the character's name is Ben. He, he only has one name. His name is Ben, but uh, he's the black guy from um, the original Night of the Living Dead. To me, he is mm. still the most realistic character in a horror movie ever. Like. He, he generally cares about other people. He's trying to save them, but when they're doing stupid shit, he's going to let them know, and he's like, nope, I'm sorry, you're going to be an idiot. I've, I've got to let you go because I can't save you and me. So I, I, he was just, like I said, he's the smartest character I've ever seen in, uh, in, a, in, a, in a horror movie. And then to go all the way to the end to actually survive the fucking zombie apocalypse and is mistakenly shot just was like no how the fuck did you kill him so yeah that that was rough for me i was like that movie still that movie is so groundbreaking even today like i fucking love that movie uh but yeah ben ben was ben, watching ben's character was was rough so uh so i said he's out uh ray got any other uh honorable mentions uh, the only other one for character that I have left is the one that uh, Lainey was going to bring up, and uh, I'll just keep that one closed. Okay. All right. Um, the last thing that we, we added on there was uh, a uh, actor, actress, 
uh, musician, whoever you wanted to throw in there. I kept mine limited to one, but if you have more than one, go ahead and mention. So, uh, Lainey? So, the one I think that impacted me the most, and there were a lot this last year that, like, really got to me, but when I really think about, like, celebrity deaths and the ones that have really made me feel something, the one that really stands out to me is Robin Williams. Yep, that was yep. tough. Robin Williams... I don't know. I feel like Robin Williams like babysat me as a kid. You know what I mean? Like I grew up with him. I, uh -huh. I watched just about everything that he did that was, you know, appropriate. Some it wasn't, but, um, <laughs> you know, I did. I grew up with him. He was the genie. He was Mrs. Doubtfire. He, he was all of these characters that I loved so much when I was growing up. And then for him to go out the way that he did was just, yeah like a slap in the face and it just killed me. Like, I remember too, like we were, what were we doing? Cause I remember this happening and like my, I just like had like a total meltdown. No, I was packing up my, my room in like my childhood house and oh, just man. like watching, like I just had like Netflix going or whatever and not thinking anything of it. I was like, oh, Mrs. Doubtfire is on Netflix. I'm gonna watch this. It was the worst one-two punch that I have ever experienced. Wow. That's oh, tough. my God. It was awful. Like, it was just too much. But, yeah, like, that I, – and I remember, like, I kept thinking, I was like, why am I getting so upset? Like, I did not know this man personally. But it did. Like, that was an awful celebrity death that well, it, it, it felt hit like, me. It felt like he got through it, right? You, you – you felt like okay, we if you wouldn't be surprised if you heard about it from the eighties version of Robin Williams. Right. But for but him to come as far as he has far and yeah. it was awful. Absolutely yeah. awful. We had uh we had a Robin Williams marathon and then uh and then I drew uh, a couple of pictures uh after that one. So I love that. I wouldn't let anybody talk to me about it <laughs> for a really long time. Mm -hmm. The one that got me the most, uh, hands down, like you said, if I think of a celebrity death, the one that always comes back to me is uh, John Candy. Oh, yeah. I was at, I was in high school. I was watching Channel One, and they announced it. And I remember everyone who was paying attention that heard it was just like, like I just sat back in my seat, and because it was like our our home period, so you know we were supposed to be doing homework or whatever. And I just sat there, like, the whole time. I, I I don't think I ever did anything the rest of that period. I don't even remember if I talked that much the rest of the day. I was just, like, so, like, how is he gone? Like, it's fucking John Candy. Like, yeah. Uncle yeah, Buck was, is dead? What the fuck, man? Like, yeah, that was, was I, I couldn't wrap my, I couldn't wrap my brain around it. Because, uh, man, I loved him. He was so many of his roles I love, you know, to, to this day. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, and you know, all these, <clears throat> all these stories come out afterwards and stuff about how like if he was filming a movie and like it happened to be Valentine's Day, he bought roses for every single woman, married or not, whatever, Aww. for Valentine's yeah. Day. He did shit like that. Like he was such a class act of a guy. And then we lost him. That just... That sucked. <sighs> that sucked. I think we need another round of that one in, one out episode that we did not too long ago where we trade oh, celebrities. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no joke. Uh, Cyrus? Well, this year was <sighs> awful. Yeah. Yep. The yeah. Valley of Death. I think about Gene Wilder, you know. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> That one, that, that one was uh, very emotional. You know, it was like Robin Williams was huge. Gene Wilder was the. I was like, oh my god, really? Well, yeah. to find out that he had been suffering was just like. You know, you go back when when you lose one of these famous people, and you look at you learn things about him you never knew, and you mm -hmm. you you go back and you find out the character of the person a little bit a little bit clearer and uh yeah just another one of those guys that nobody had anything bad to say about you know that everybody uh genuinely 
is going to miss and had so many positive like smiles when they're talking about them, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, like that's how you can tell somebody really, really likes somebody when they just smile when they talk about them. And, uh, you know, to see you know, like Mel Brooks, mm-hmm. you know, t- telling stories about various different things or different celebrities talking about, you know, yeah, it, Obviously, he was a great actor and comedian and, and everything, but uh, he was uh, tremendously giving to young actors and, and people trying to figure out how to, you know, who they're going to be and what they're, you know, how they're going to do it. And yeah, you know, there's so many stories that people were sharing about things that he did for them, you know showing up at their rehearsals and their plays when, you know, they had, you know, just like very giving guy, very giving guy. He cared a lot about the young people. Yep. Stupid 2016. Seriously. I'll say that 2016 had like the highest volume of like celebrity deaths that like really meant something to me. That was awful. We started off with Alan Rickman and then it was just like bing, bang, boom. It was awful. I mean, at the end it finishes off and it can't, it's like greedy, you know, it's like, it really was. It was like, Oh, Hey, you haven't had enough. I'm going to take princess Leia too. suck it. It was awful. And her mom and her mom. Uh, yeah. uh, Ray. Well, y'all just stroked three lists, uh, three of the names off my list. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, there you go. Yeah, 2016 for for Carrie Fisher and Alan Rickman. I mean, Alan Rickman. Oh God. Uh, he, he looked after all those kids on Harry Potter. Yeah, like, he, he did. Like, Looking out for them, and then uh, he loved that uh, that the. Um, the kid that played uh, Weasley um, drew oh. a horrible picture <laughs> Rupert, of him and oh, kept Rupert it. Grant. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so so those hit me hard. But if uh, if I'm going to be honest, um, one that was somewhat recent, hearing about Uncle Phil, uh, James Avery. Oh God, that was awful. From Fresh Prince. Yeah, when he passed oh, away, that yeah. was. That one hit me because I he grew up as a father figure I, when I was growing up. Like that was definitely a father figure. I, I you know, I love that show. So, yeah, that was awful. Yeah, stupid. Man, we don't ever need to do this kind of a show again. Ever. No. This is <laughs> this is terrible. I don't know why anybody would want to listen to this show. I know because is, misery loves company. Yeah, uh, it does. I, I'm not listening to this one. Well, it's like you I know. said about the crime. I have thing. to because I have to make sure there's no problems with it. But um, <laughs> the ones that Jay had on his list were Carrie Fisher, Robin yeah. Williams, yeah. John Candy, and George Carlin. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, George, George, George Carlin was rough. Yeah. Oh, remember, remember Phil Hartman. Oh, see the one, the thing that Hartman, the reason why Hartman hit so hard was the way that he died. He died, yeah. yeah. It wasn't <sighs> sick or anything like that. That was awful. Perfect health, and yeah, just. Mm. So. May I say, by the way, Prince was a very close second on my list. Yeah, yeah, I, I figured he was going to be on your list. Oh God, I, st- I still elevator. miss Prince. I still miss Prince. Like every now and then, like I'll still like. Something will come on, and I just I still think about him. Yeah. Speaking I of Alan Rickman, the Purple Rain. Speaking of Alan Rickman, though, uh, uh, if you if you when you if when you get around to watching the movies with Mikey and he he does Robin Hood, <laughs> oh, yeah. I think every time he refers to Alan Rickman, it's uh, Alan motherfucking Rickman. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because you know what, Alan motherfucking Rickman. Because yeah. <laughs> If you want a good little Alan Rickman movie too, go watch Dogma. That's a great movie. I, I adore Dogma. There's a lot of people that don't care for it. I, I love Dogma. loved Dogma, and he was, was the bomb in that. That's movie. talk about a movie with layers. That's a great oh, yeah. movie. That is a good oh, movie. Oh, Dogma's awesome. Yep. 
Well, that is our episode. Uh, sorry, guys. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah. We'll be we back next week with something fans? more uplifting. I promise. Um, no more. No more fans? recommendations from Jay. Um, Sheesh. Let's move on to our picks and pans there for the week. Uh, I'm going to start. Uh, last night, I stayed up late and I finished Westworld. Ooh, oh man, I gotta I'm, watch. That. I've watched yes. one episode of the whole thing. Okay. I okay. Remember. Now I have. I will be very honest. I have not. I, I I'm several seasons behind on uh, Game of Thrones. I'm several episodes behind on uh, 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 The Walking Dead. Girl, you need to catch up on Game of Thrones. I need to talk to you about it. Okay. Uh, okay. All I can say at this point is stop watching all those other shows. Whatever. Fuck all of those other shows. Whatever. The Westworld is my, right now my favorite TV show, maybe ever. Oh my God. All There's right. so <laughs> many layers to this show. Number one, I love science fiction. I love the Old West. This is like, this is not just, this is like, this isn't just peanut butter and jelly that's been mixed together and it's fucking great. This is like you threw everything else in there that's fucking great. This is, the acting yeah. is great. The special effects are great. I cannot wait. So I cannot wait for you to watch the show because I can't wait to talk to you about it. In fact, sometime or another, Ray, y'all finished it, right? Yep. Okay. Sometime or another, we're going to have to get online and we're going to have to talk about it because I've got so many feelings. Okay. Okay. I will watch it. I'm going to I'm gonna download the episodes and I'm going to watch them this week. Oh, my God. It is so good. <laughs> and the thing that's killer, the thing that kills me about it is it leaves. It, it's such a good close to the first season. And we have oh. to wait till 2018 to get any more because they're like, nope, we're going to take our time and do a good job on this. And I'm just like, and then when you find out that a fucking Nolan brother fucking wrote it, you're just like, well, of course, of course, yeah. because reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God! If you have not watched Westworld, go Just, watch Westworld. I, I will warn you, Sai. It's a slow build. No, it I'm is sure. a bit of a slow build, but once you get to about the ooh, the seventh episode is when shit gets real. Okay. Even the six, yeah. Don't yeah, I, yeah, but even the six. That's yeah. good. Don't want to hear nothing else. Nothing. Yeah, no, 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 no. No, I'm not going to say anything else. So, uh, Lainey, uh, pick your pan for the week. My pick is um, a little YouTube series which um i don't know if you friends on the show all know this i know eugene has an idea i fucking love drag queens Ooh. and i've been getting like really deep into like old seasons of rupaul's drag race um and one of the drag queens on one of those seasons who i love has this youtube series which the premise of it is something i totally hate um because it's all about like reviewing like commenting on other ridiculous web videos but something about the way that willem belly does it is fucking hilarious but yeah it's called beat down with willem and it's so fucking funny i could watch it for hours and that was actually why i was like getting onto the show tonight so uh, it's just oh, so funny in fact that's what i'm gonna go watch after this horribly depressing show that we've just recorded so well there you go uh so i pick a pan for the week i have a pick in a pan and it's both the same thing I know exactly go. what you're going to say. Go for it, dude. <laughs> the Nintendo Switch. Uh, we got our big Nintendo Switch show, and we've had a couple more things that have happened since, so Treehouse and all this kind of stuff. I know if you're not really familiar with the terminology, uh, basically, uh, Nintendo showed off their new game console. It's a hybrid system that's both a portable and a home console, but it's more portable, I think. But it, it's the same. It, it works for both. Um, so they had a big show in Japan and they showed it off the next day. They had a, uh, like a live five hour stream where they showed off a whole bunch of games and stuff. And there's every day they're, they're saying more about it. They're building it up. It's coming out March 3rd, um, launch title. Uh, well, there's a couple of games coming out at launch. First, the biggest game is Zelda. Obviously it's a launch title. It I have gorgeous. Yes. I have it reserved and I have the, switch reserved but uh this thing was uh, was uh, obviously um there's a lot to love about the nintendo switch and the reveal and everything and then there's a lot to not and if uh, you want to know more about my uh conflicting feelings about all that go to my channel on youtube and you'll see me 
because I'm going to be doing some videos discussing how I felt, how I felt about how the Japanese handled their shitty press conference. Um, uh, is a uh, game rambling on for tomorrow? No, we're not doing it tomorrow. We did two shows the night of this and we've decided to not do another game rambling this quick. We're going to wait until next Sunday. Although okay, we may have, yeah. we, we might have a new audio show coming uh, called group rambling or something to that effect. That's what I'm calling it right now. Uh, not group therapy, but <laughs> I figured game rambling, group rambling. I don't know. But basically that would be like several different hosts from all over the place, different YouTube personalities that we come together and we do like a round table discussion of gaming topics. Um, nice. So you would be invited to that too, Eugene. If you cool. Would. Yeah. I would. Yeah. I have to jump on there sometime. So, yeah. uh, Ray pick or pan, uh, one of each. Okay. Uh, my pan for tonight is this show. <laughs> <laughs> That's Sorry, a first. Just, just this episode. Okay. Uh, <laughs> damn, that was yeah. yeah Enough of Jay, I'm not already. listening to you anymore, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? Uh, <laughs> and then uh, my pick uh, is uh, hockey related, of course. Uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs are in currently a playoff spot. They have won nine of their last 11 games, and dear God, are they on a tear. So, uh, yeah, really happy with the Toronto Maple Leafs right now. Well, there you go. I love it. Go sports. Puck. I want to know more <laughs> about hockey so bad. I want to watch so much hockey so bad. <laughs> Hey, you got you got. Uh, don't watch tonight's game in Dallas. No. But <laughs> you do have a team in Dallas, so we do have a team in Dallas. We do. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I watched some practice once, and it was very entertaining. I have been to two like minor league hockey games. Unfortunately, I went to like one of their all star ones, which you know, being the all star one, they didn't really like put forth a bunch of effort. Uh, because it wasn't a season game. The other yeah. game that I went to was fucking awesome uh, because it, they were just starting the league around here and I got seats right up on the glass and like they were laying into each other and it was awesome. So uh, not yeah. only are they crazy tall and crazy strong, but they're crazy fast and they beat the shit out of each other. It's awesome. So I love me some hockey. Love it. Well, that is our show for this week, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you're not overly depressed, uh, if you would, go to iTunes or Stitcher or uh, Google Play, wherever it is you watch or listen to the episode, and uh, give us a five-star rating. It does help get the word out there. Um, also, seriously, like, tell your friends about the show. We've, we've picked up some new listeners, uh, some people hey guys, that I've to. Sorry to bum you out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so uh, hopefully, yeah, go back and listen to some of the other episodes. We we tend to be a little happier, but uh, uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, tell your friends about it because I'm sure there's at least one episode that you know they'll find something that they'll really like. Uh, that's one of the nice things about the show is we do lots of different topics. So um, you can find the site on uh, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Epically Geeky. Of course, you can find it at the actual website, epicallygeeky.com. Uh, you can also find our individual adventures online. Where can we find you online, Cyrus Martin? Go to YouTube, look for Video Game Virus or Cyrus Martin, and you'll find me in either one of those. Uh, or uh, go to VidMe. I'm also on VidMe.com. You can check me out there. Or just go to VideoGameVirus.com. Lady, where can we find you online? You can find me on um, can you find me Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> At it's a Laney Bird, and you can also find me every couple of weeks on the uh, Epic Rhythm and Bruce podcast. Yes, you can. Uh, Ray, where can we find you online? Uh, best place would be uh, here on this podcast, of course. And then uh, on Instagram, you can find me at uh, just search for Lake Life Artist. Yes, I saw you posted some uh, some frame arm, framed artwork. Yeah, I was pretty happy that that got out. Very cool. Very cool. You can follow my individual wacky adventure online at Optimus Gene on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. For everyone on the site, have a good night.